Hello, uh, my name is Drew Reese, and I probably am one of the more fortunate people to ever have lived a life. I was born in 1947 in Kansas City, overlooking the Missouri River. Loved to fish and just happened to be dropped into the mecca of light line fishing and the people that developed it. In 1947, I was a baby boom child. The men, like my father, that fought in World War II brought back spinning equipment, fly rods, things from overseas that would change the way that we fish in our country over a period of time. When I was 17 years old and graduated from high school, four days after our graduation ceremony, we left for Canada. And on the 5th of June, um, we crossed the bridge at Sioux Narrows on the way to the Winnipeg River. And then within a few years, I came down to fish on Lake of the Woods because they had muskies and the Winnipeg River really didn't have any muskie fishing in it. And I've missed two years in all that time and I'm 71 now. And those two years were the two years I was fishing tournaments. When I uh, qualified for the first Bassmaster Classic, the coolest part about it was we had no idea where we were gonna go fish and all you could bring was 10 pounds of fishing tackle and four rods and reels. Everybody flew into Atlanta, put us on an airplane and when they got about halfway out there, Ray Scott announced where we were going and it was a lot, you know, Las Vegas and Mead Lake and he actually got Delta to where they, they got a clearance to fly down to like 6,000 feet in a passenger jet over Mead Lake. And there was a guy from Louisiana on the plane named Body Meadows, and I'll never forget him. And he said, Lord, if you took all the water I fished in my whole life and stacked it on top of each other in Louisiana, you'd never have as much water as there is in that lake. <laughs> and that kind of summed it up for everybody. But it was a hoot, it was a great experience. I was a 23 year old kid. It was like an opportunity of a lifetime to see things and do things um, that I would have never dreamed of doing. You know, I, I have kept logs on fishing. Um, the first log that I kept was the year that I qualified for the classic. And it would frighten people to death how few fish I actually caught during that year. And it was basically to help me begin to pattern what fish were doing so that if the water temperature was a certain thing and the wind was a certain direction or watercolor or floods, or I could go back in there and look at what was most productive. The most bass I've caught in a year was a little over 5,000. I'd have to look in the logs and that was two years ago. This year, I'm right at three, it's what, the 5th of June, and I'm right at 3,000 fish for the year, and probably 75% of them would be bass, I would say. Ned Cady was in the bass club I started, and Ned Cady wrote for In Fisherman, and Ned was telling me about fishing in this new lure or lures that, that he was fishing from Z-Man, the Elastac, and he was cutting the Zinker Z in half and fishing it on a light jig hood. And at that time, Z-Man had prototypes of the Shad Z. And Ned had some prototypes of that Shad Z, and he says, we need to get together and go fishing. And we went to Garnett City Lake, and the snow was melting and running off in the lake. And when that nitrogen comes into the lake, it's the toughest fishing there is. And I was an avid tube fisherman. And he says, well, do you want to try one of these baits? And I said, no, you go ahead and I'll fish these. And I was just sure that I would catch as many fish as he would. And he caught seven fish and missed six other strikes. And I never even had a tap. And he gave me one of them. And after I caught a couple of fish on it, he gave me like two more of the prototypes. And really, that's what led me to be such a fan of fishing elastic. How did you come to be involved with Z-Man? <laughs> you don't really want this one. <laughs>
We can edit it. No, we can edit it out. They have the hard head. You don't have that on, do you? <laughs> they have the most hard headed son of a. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'll just call you hard headed. <laughs> After I fished with Ned and had those two prototypes, I went to the small lake in Garnet and fished. And I was pulling out and they had a little boat ramp. And I pulled out on that and I'm going, why in the heck does this catch so many fish? And I dropped it down on the mushroom head and looked down in the water and that Shad Z just sat there and did this. And there was a walkway across the lake and four people walked across the rockway and it was 50 yards away. And all of a sudden that bait started dancing like this just from the people walking across that. So immediately from being in the tackle industry, I decided I needed to call Z-Man and tell him, you, you don't know what you have. You need to make what ended up being the TRD that you needed to make that. And I called him. And I just kept bugging him, and I finally talked to, to Daniel Nussbaum, who was in charge of it, and I know he thought I was a nut. You know, I told him I fished the first classic and the rest of it. And I said, you just really don't understand what a terrific material that stuff is, because it gives lures the angle that all lure companies have been trying to find since the early 1900s to get a bait that didn't lay flat on the bottom and up off of the bottom and move. And I tried to get him to make the bait and he wouldn't make it. And I called him again and told him he needed to make the bait. And then I went to Canada and I fished that Shad Z and I actually sent him one that had been crazy glued back together uh, that caught 137 fish on one bait. And I just kept bugging him, and he kept telling me no. And I finally took two of the Z-Man uh, spinnerbait trailers and cut them off. So there was four little legs like this and glued those four tails onto what I wanted and sent it to him. <laughs> and he says, you know, I showed it to people in production and he says, I think we'll go ahead and make that bait. And that became the hula stick. And my intent was then to cut those tails off them and then I'd have the TRD, which is what I wanted to fish with. And lo and behold, I got the hula stick and it was caught more big fish on that bait than I can even explain. You hear people say, well, the finesse stuff is not for big fish. They're just not fishing. It catches big fish. It really does. I've caught my biggest northern on Lake of the Woods. I've caught my biggest smallmouth out of Lake of the Woods. I've caught a 47 and a half inch muskie, and I caught my biggest lake trout on that bait. It's just the elastic stuff is entirely different than anything else I ever fished with. I mean, you just catch a lot more fish. Just write this down. The next time you see Ned Cady, mm -hmm. just ask him if Drew Reese invented the hula sticker or if he did. <laughs> <laughs>